and we are live. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, slight technical problems. You know how it works. Uh, but yeah, very happy to 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 have you here tonight uh, for the uh, the very last stream of the season on on the MEP Assistant. Uh, and so to celebrate the occasion, I made this special event to celebrate it and have some fun while still playing, uh, talking about Europe. But like I, I just spoiled, we're also going to play. Uh, I'm welcoming tonight not one, not two, but three MEPs, uh, and we will play together the game Among Us to uh, put to the test their ability to convince people and each other something that uh, someone could argue is pretty essential to any politician. Uh, but we, we're not, not only going to play, we're also, also going to uh, talk about European politics uh, after each game, so we alternate one game, one se set of discussion, and so on and so forth to discuss about what they thought about 2021 as a political year, what they expect from 2022. Uh, and as always, you'll be able to uh, ask uh, your question via the chat. I will keep an eye on it. But you know the usual rules. Uh, we only talk about EU politics, no national politics, unless it's relevant to uh, EU politics. Uh, so tonight, uh, we have with us uh, Drago, uh, Drago Spislao, who was already on the, on the, uh, on the channel once in, uh, in the past. Uh, he's a Romanian MEP. From Renew, we will have Marketa Gregorova, so a Czech MEP uh, from the Pirate slash uh, Green uh, group, uh, and we will have Damian Borzolager, also uh, a German MEP from Volt and also a Green uh, MEP. We were supposed to have, as you can see on screen, Iban Garcia de Blanco, so a socialist uh, Spanish MEP, but he literally had uh, a last-minute change of agenda, uh, so he couldn't attend. So instead, uh, to save the day, I asked uh, Icaros, who you know, as uh, people who follow the channel know, uh, to uh, to join us tonight to, to allow us to play. Uh, so yeah, uh, without further ado, let's let's meet the team actually. So good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to to join us and, and participate to the, to this uh, special event. Quite unusual, not the the, the usual event you're, you're attending as a. As, uh, as MEPs, but yeah, th th thank you very much for, for taking the time. So what I will ask you is uh, each of you to introduce yourself very briefly uh, to, the, uh, to, to the audience. Uh, tell, uh, tell them who you are, what you work on, uh, uh, where you come from, that sort of thing. So let's start uh, with Mrs. Gregorova. So tell us everything. Uh, everything but shortly, sure. Yeah. Uh, hi everyone, <laughs> I was also on this channel already and we miserably failed in playing Portal 2. Uh, I am, as I was introduced, a pirate from the Czech Republic and uh, I focus mostly on hybrid threats such as disinformation or cy cyber security. But I will discuss anything and everything and of course not lie about it because I am a crewmate. Oh, of course, of course. We'll put that to the test. Uh, well, next up, uh, Mr. Pislau, you're up. Tell us everything in one minute. Yeah, so thank you for having me again. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, for those of you who haven't uh, seen uh, our uh, common uh, broadcast last time, I'm from Romania, from um, Union Save Romania, USR um, party, uh, part of Renew Europe Group. Um, my main focus uh, this legislator is actually on the recovery. Uh, this was not planned in them, <laughs> actually from 2019. I actually worked together with Damien and we, we have a very good team on that. Um, and uh, my second uh, most important uh, field is related to um, labor and social affairs where I'm a coordinator from Green Europe. So I'm uh, ready to talk about uh, Econ, Ample or ETRA issues or anything else that would you would like to, to hear about so thank, thank you, you and so to finish uh, our very uh, competent roster uh, i have someone who has not been on the channel yet for for his interview but hopefully we will find time next year so darren bozolago welcome for your first time on the on the on the, on the stream uh, and so introduce yourself to, uh, to the audience because they have never met you before <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like I'm like the odd one out that nobody knows. Uh, so, um, but thanks a lot for the invitation and I will be happy to go to the interview. So I'm Damien, um, I'm a co-founder of Volt Europa, which is a pan-European movement uh, trying to, you know, counter a bit the right wing uh, populist agenda with a more integrationist idea of Europe working together because all the problems get bigger and Europe should therefore integrate. Um, and I work on electoral law, like voting age 16, for example, but also second vote for um, uh, for all of us, for European parties, so we get a bit of a better Europe. I work uh, with Dragos on the 
recovery and I'm the spokesperson for the Greens on that issue. Um, I work on uh, migration and asylum, so labor migration, blue card, it's a visa program and um, uh, yeah, and also on the you know asylum system and I work on data policy and um, so everything connected to data intermediaries or um, other stuff like that and I'm on the AI special committee and write <laughs> a report on that as well so I'm uh, a bit everywhere and um, that's the you know the issue if you're like a lone member in the European Parliament I'm the only vote member then you need to cover a bit more <laughs> stuff but the, it's great fun and I really enjoyed it a lot it's my first mandate obviously since we just started this party but I'm very happy to be here. Well, actually, you're, you're, all three of you are on your first mandate, so uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to, to hear, pro to discuss a bit, probably, about your perspective, like uh, as first mandate and half of it being under COVID so far, uh, almost half of it being under COVID, uh, that would make for an interesting conversation. So just a quick first question. Uh, did you all have the occasion to work together as, uh, as MEPs uh, in your respective committee? It seems that, of, of course, Maketa knows that. Damien, because they are from the, the, the same uh, political group, but it seems that Dragos and uh, Damien also have some history. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely, I mean, super true, yeah? With Makita, as you said, like, uh, we, we see each other also for beers uh, quite often. <laughs> um, but uh, with uh, Dragos, um, I had the probably most intense time, uh, maybe even of my life, uh, last year, um, Christmas, uh, when we were negotiating the you know 672.5 billion european recovery fund until uh, you know very early in the morning or late in the evening whatever you want to call it and i have a very uh, fond memory of us walking out of the negotiations because we were humiliated a bit by the other side and then we said we're not taking this and then we had sushi and beers and uh, <laughs> i really remember that very fondly hopefully that saved a bit the evening if not the file uh, but actually, that, that would make for, for an interesting conversation. How, do, how did you leave the, uh, this uh, this through? And my second question, because when I, I was uh, communicating around the event in preparation of tonight on Reddit, etc., people were were questioning what what is that MEPs playing video game? Are, are just they trying to to, uh, to do a uh, hello fellow kids kind of thing? So the, the question that popped up often: Do you actually play video games on your own free time? And, and if yes, what are you playing? Uh, Marketa, start. <laughs> Obviously, let's start with uh, the person with a gaming chair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, actually, I play a lot. Uh, well, in terms of uh, quantity of time, but I do not play a lot of games. Mostly, I play League of Legends, uh, Aram only. <laughs> and uh, uh, oh, of course, when Among Us last year pretty much peaked, I played a lot of Among Us. I, I can't remember now because it's been a year, uh, but when it was uh, at its peak, I played a lot, a lot. And well, apart from other games, sometimes I, I download something and try to play it, but I always come back to what I know the best, you know, which is League of Legends and Minecraft. <laughs> I'm a the classics. Lady. What can I say? As long as it works. Uh, Dragos, tell us everything. Yeah, so uh, as we are right now doing this, I have one of my kids playing Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation. <laughs> so just for you to know, he's actually very, very close to me. Um, I, I used to play Counter-Strike. Uh, at oh. that time, I was actually playing, you know, I think version 1.4. I was one of the first versions and I mm. played in, in an internet cafe. I mean, for those of you that don't know what that is, I mean, oh. <laughs> we didn't have the luxury in Romania to play it, uh, you know, home. Um, and there were these private servers and it was quite, quite nice. And then um, I played uh, World of Warcraft even during vanilla. Uh, times so uh, that was actually a very very nice time with the socializing with the guilds and doing you know a little bit of competitive not necessarily I was not that good but I was there in the second team of my guild uh, you know and then you know caught the first uh, the first team and I was actually like I touched God <laughs> so, <laughs> so so I mean <laughs> that was quite crazy so um, I, I've been then afterwards uh, just a casual gamer and I came back to World of Warcraft for a couple of expansions. I've, uh, I've played Dota uh, a, a little bit uh, because I, I, I found it quite interesting. And then on PlayStation again, casually playing. So uh, not necessarily a hardcore gamer, but I really enjoy spending time and, you know, emerging uh, in, in this kind of, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, let's say, reality. Let's put it this way. And what about you, Damien? 
So I would say uh, I was kind of a heavy gamer when I was younger. So I mean, I played, you know, all the Warcraft. I played Command and Conquer. I played Half Life. I played like, uh, but Command and Conquer, even you know, the Ego Shooter, Renegade. I, like I really played probably all the games that were out at that time, from Dungeons and Dragons, whatever. Like all these things. So it's a, bo a bit. I mean, I started, you know, with the first Settler game when you still had to start uh, Windows uh, from DOS, um, which uh, many of you maybe remember, or maybe not that many, I don't know, or when you had to wait for your computer to start while reading a book, you know, because it took some time, or, and the modem was like making all these do 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 But then I, um, I have to say, I got a bit of a bad conscience, and maybe it's a bit my problem, but like, I've, I felt that I should, you know, somehow focus on other things with the time um, that I have. Um, and therefore, like now, I'm um, I'm actually not gaming um, so much. So I'm very happy to go get back to it. I, and I have to tell you one thing. I you know this book that tells you if you play ten thousand hours or if you do ten thousand hours or something. Yeah. I think it's like I don't. So I did play ten thousand hours of um, N64 uh, Super Smash Bros. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I calculated roughly, I think. So I still haven't met a single person that can beat me in that. So if you uh, <laughs> if nice. you want to, um, and I'll play Fox, you won't have a chance. But uh, I, I think it's a bit harder, harder to stream that. You know? Oh, there's always there are always ways. Uh, that, that's the beauty of it. Uh, but uh, actually, you you all almost better gamers than, than me because I never play League of Legends. I always still stayed clear of World of Warcraft for my own safety because I knew that otherwise I would play only that. Uh, and I actually never, I played very little uh, Smash Bros. So, you know, you, you all have a very decent uh, gamer profile. And well, speaking of which, uh, let's start our, our game. So uh, you will see uh, in, the, in the game, I will change the camera. So you can see everyone on the side. Um, Everyone goes mute uh, themselves. Chat. Uh, I will not look at you or anything. So let's start. Uh, let's start the actual game. So uh, everyone mutes themselves and uh, let's try to survive. Oh, by the way, Damian got kicked out. Yeah, I'm kicked out. Oh. So, like, I'll have to wait for the next round because uh, sadly, like when I got away from the app or whatever, it kicked me out. But I'll be happy to join the next. Well, round. no, 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 no. Wait, wait. I'm, go I'm going to uh, to leave the game and restart a new one. Uh, don't worry. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, so everyone leaves the game. I'm going to post the code in chat, uh, like right now. And there you go. So just type the code, and we are back in business. Uh, okay. Look at that. Being there. My gosh. And yeah, just just as a warning for for, for, for the audience, uh, be uh, be kind to Damien because uh, poor Ray is playing from his phone. <laughs> we didn't manage to to make it work from his computer, so he's playing on his phone right now. The the, the game. And we have everyone, so let's up, get back in it. I will start the game. So everyone goes mute and see you in a minute. All right, so myself, I'm hiding everything. I'm not looking at the chat. Oh, I'm in poster. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. I invite people and uh, I'm going to have to kill them. You might want to mute yourself, MEP. I'm not muted? But let's just keep playing while that information is out there. Oh shite! <laughs> uh, how come I how come I'm not muted? Oh, because it changed my settings of, of my. <laughs> I, I'm, I have I'm excellent. Calling. I have I very good defense. Nothing. I didn't know you didn't do it on purpose. Oh shit! I'm calling uh, this pentalog to uh, put out there that I think I know who the okay, customer let, is. Okay, mm. let let me change my mic. Oh, I did change my. Uh, okay, let me check something. And now, no, we can't can you? Me, yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> Oh well, I, I I have a very good defense. I have a very good defense. Uh, it's not me. It's it's uh it's Mikkel. He, he hijacked my uh my mic and uh and all that. <laughs> the, the, yeah, sure, I, I, sure. I, I I would I would I would defend myself in this case, but uh, I actually uh, vote for myself. All right. Well, just vote for me. Let's finish it and restart. <laughs> uh, see see how how much of a pro gamer I am. It's good that you, you know, uh, think, uh, make us think that you're bad at this game, but it exactly, is, it's it's all, uh, 
Yeah. I'm playing meta. Uh, okay, I'm gonna yeah. skip the vote that way. Oh, I get kicked. Really powerful psyops. Exactly, exactly. It's you all to put you in trust. The, I was bluffing, you know. I was oh. bluffing. Yeah. Oh, well, I think he would have lasted one round and then. Uh... <laughs> oh, I lost. Yeah. Play again. All right. <laughs> this time, this time I will cut the mic for real. <laughs> oh, okay. That was just a tryout run. Now uh, I get the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's the first one who denounced himself. All right, uh, now we're starting, and I will cut the mic. Let's cut all cut the mic, myself included. Oh, there are new colors. Nice. Yeah, I just also changed mine. Yeah, well, blind red fits. Right. I'm sorry you're not following your advice of cutting the mic. I hope it's okay. <laughs> do, do cut the mics, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna make the same mistakes as me. As me. I don't underestimate us. Okay. Indeed. I'm not gonna say anything okay, that's so, going to. Um, what's the task now? So how do I do a task? You need to go to the. Oh, uh, you have the maps uh, top right. Okay. And where you have exp exclamation marks, that's where you're supposed to do, to go to perform tasks. Okay. And tasks bring you points, but you should try not to get killed. Is that true? Uh, yeah, tasks allow, allow you to advance the, uh, in the game. Uh, and if everyone performs its task, uh, then the, the crewmates win the game and not the imposters. Okay. And in case I should have died, <laughs> what can I do then? Uh, you, if you die, then you respawn as a ghost and you can still perform your, your task while a ghost. That way you can still make the team won, win even if you die. Interesting. And nobody can stop me from doing that. No, nobody can uh, can stop you from doing that. Oh. Alright. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I see you. Uh, uh, run away. Vacation. Maybe Damien got killed. Maybe I should go to the bottom. Oh, I'm gonna get killed. Ah, of course it's Mikkel. Of course it's Mikkel. Betrayed by my uh, by my own people. Ah. What can you do? All right, let's see. I found dead Damien in the cafeteria. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Top of the screen. I'm sorry I died. It's, I really tried to stay alive, eh? but they somehow, <laughs> um, I think two are dead, actually. MEP and... I, actually, yeah. I know the imposter. I know but the... just uh, just uh, precision, Damien, when, when, once you are killed, uh, stay silent because that way you don't influence Marketa and Dragos who are, who are supposed to, uh, and, and Mikael who are supposed to, to find out who, who is yeah, what. Yeah. yeah, I was silent until this very moment when I was actually. So Dragos, you said you um, you know who the imposter is, but how? No, 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 you're not. You're not Damien. supposed to speak. You're not supposed you to speak. speak. You are dead. Shush. Shush. Dragos, who did it? I, I can't tell. I, I can I tell or what? Yes, this is the we time to, find to accuse. Is. Yeah, so basically uh, it's Mikkel because I was near Marketa and she was actually doing the task alongside me. So either she now, was pretending very well or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree or, with Dragos uh, because uh, I had the same experience. I was next to him and he didn't kill me. So Mikkel is the only option. I don't know why he self... Uh, uh, but, 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 I mean, you haven't voted yet, so it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Uh, Dragos was really, really quick to do, to 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 throw blame on me here. I, I feel a little bit suspicious <laughs> about this. Uh, hasn't seen any. That, now you've both voted. I'm not. Sure. This, this is a class struggle between the ruling class and the peasantry. Oh God! How well, you be compromised in the European Parliament? You know, <laughs> quickly. <laughs> no. So now you could speak, Damien. You could you could speak. 
Akita, I, I'm really glad that uh, I've met you. Uh, I <laughs> invite you to the coffee to, you know, fight for, you know, against other imposters, but uh, in another field of duty, let's say. <laughs> yes, ni nice uh, cooperating with you on this one. Yes. Yeah, I mean, in the future, you will be able to to, to refer to that in a, in shallow meetings. Oh, how, how come uh, you you get along so well? Or oh, you know, we are, we collaborating in the mongoose and in, in kicked out an imposter. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> she's my teammate. You know. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, on this first win, I, uh, can we have a first discussion? So, let me switch back uh, my screen. Let's talk a bit about politics. Uh, so, 2021, uh, almost over in 11 days. So overall, uh, would, what would you say was like your personal political achievement of 2021? Uh, the, the thing you're most proud of for this year? So Dragos. Yeah, so um, for me, it was really an amazing year. I, I'm tired like hell. <laughs> so, so I want to sleep. <laughs> That's the only thing I wish for Christmas. Um, it was an amazing year because it, last year I was actually closing the trilogue uh, of, with the recovery package. This uh, last plenary in Strasbourg, I closed the file on the coordination of social security systems, re Regulation 883. And this was a file that uh, we struggled to, to close in 17 trilogues over a, a four year uh, period. So I took it over from the last legislator. Um, I was not the main rapporteur, but I was really, really involved in that. And apart from that, I also got the vote in the Employment and Social Affairs Committee on the resolution that I initiated on my own. It was a resolution on empowering youth after the pandemic. So the European Parliament resolution on youth from the Employment and Social Affairs Committee. This, this will actually be voted in the plenary, I think, in January or latest in February. So these are actually two of the most important things in the European Parliament. Um, uh, again, the resolution from the Employment Committee and um, the file regulation 883 as well. Otherwise, again, there are a lot of other things. So it was a really, really good year for me. A second uh, really, really good year for me. Well, good to hear. Uh, what about you, Marketa? Um well, for me, it would probably not be directly connected to legislation because I'm really proud uh, for my two campaigns that I was doing, uh, you know, within uh, uh, Czech Republic, uh, because uh, I, I found out that we can do that, uh, or I found even <laughs> like the year before. But I really uh, set my foot into it because, for those of who don't know, uh, MEPs have some, uh, let's say, uh, resources from their group uh, for uh, any kind of promotion of their work, mostly uh, like um, you know, information campaigns. And I did two information campaigns. One is one was focused. On on disinformation and uh, what kind of threat it poses and it created a lot of actually uh, output and I'm quite proud of it and the second one was just uh, in like uh, before the uh, Czech parliamentary elections or some time before that in terms of well it was called politics is for everyone and it was about motivating uh, young people women and other people who are usually not feeling uh, like those who should join politics or not not, not very encouraged uh, that uh, you know this is also for, for them uh, the, the main message was pretty much there is no high school of politics and uh, in the constitution the only uh the only limitation is either 18 or 21 years old you know going into politics mm -hmm. so you should and then of course uh, the campaign was focused on why what is it like to be a politician what's uh, the usual tasks how can you prepare etc and i think that a lot of people had a good feedback on it that they feel now more emancipated so that's very nice to hear always and, and what about you uh, damien what was your highlight of the year yeah, it's uh, difficult to say. There was a lot of stuff going on, to be honest. So I, I just um, counted again, actually, um, a couple of days ago. I, if you count the recovery fund, um, I work, or negotiated close this year five uh, legislative files. Um, but if you don't count it, I mean, it's four. Um, it's two aside, or like two migration files, one on the blue card, which basically allows people to come, um, you know, more, more easily to Europe if they want. But also it's really important to change um, you know, country very easily. So before you were quite of, I mean, the European Union is great. You can travel as an EU citizen everywhere and work everywhere. But if you're a migrant, you can't, you know, it's really like 27 different countries. And we changed that a bit, at least for the blue card holders, because they can now very easily go from one country to the next. And they can 
take the years with them that they accumulate towards long-term residency so that they are actually mobile. Um, the other one is the European Asylum Agency, which is a bit of an update of uh, an office that was already there, which was really cool, uh, giving a bit more or standardizing a bit the European asylum system. Um, and the next one was the Data Governance Act, which is about data intermediaries, uh, basically ensuring that they're neutral and that we at some point have stock exchanges for data, if you like, in a way. And the last one was a really very busy uh, time, which was the budget for the next year of the European Union. Um, and there I was responsible for like uh, all the institutions, like the Court of Justice and the Court of Auditors and the European Parliament and so on. But there was a lot of uh, stuff, a uh, lot of negotiations, um, but um, I think it was cool. There were also some campaigns. I mean, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff. <laughs> and there was also elections in Germany, which uh, was quite busy. So I don't know. I think um, I just realized uh, time and time again, it's only possible to do all of this with a really good team. And so the, I think oh. the highlight of my year is to, uh, to have an amazing team, I guess. And uh, sorry, I had launched the game uh, so that we didn't kick out of the of the lobby. But actually, we got kicked out anyway. So I'm just going to post uh, for you, Damien, the code. Bear with me a second. And so, like like we mentioned already in the introduction, it's for, for all three of you. It's your first mandate, uh, and you spent like now a year and a half, uh, more than a year and a half, two years now in uh, under COVID. So, so how does it feel for uh, uh, for, for an MEP like to to find yourself discovering your mandate, but it's not really a, a mandate like uh, like the other. So, so how do you manage that? Wants to start. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's a, okay. it's open discussion. Okay. It's open discussion. Okay. Uh, so I, I mean, um, uh, we, I think that we uh, were actually cheating a little bit because those of we, those of us that were involved in tri trilogues, were actually allowed to negotiate physically, and this was a huge advantage. I doubt that you can do, <laughs> you know, remote negotiation via Zoom or whatever via WebEx. Um, so, so I think that when, when it, there were really, really important things, we actually were allowed uh, with all the precautionary measures, but we were allowed to meet. So it was actually uh, uh, something okay. Otherwise, um, working remote for me meant even more work. I'm a workaholic anyway, but, but not being able to, to making a break between the meetings, you know, just going back to back, that was kind of awful. I mean, people are expecting you to just jump from one meeting to the other. So uh, that, that was a little bit uh, tricky. So um, I think that uh, this is something that uh, um, I, I missed, you know, to, to have a little bit uh, of time to, 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 in, to go uh, and, and then do some breaks in between meetings uh, and focus a little bit. And the other thing, and uh, it's, it's what is very important, I, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were in lockdown, I started to jog again and to do a little bit of sports. But uh, when things came back to hybrid, and you know, uh, you know, more or less, uh, we resumed our work um, uh, because of the rhythm of work and trying to get it back on track and so on. I was not able to do that anymore. So a little bit affected on the uh, physical shape let's put it this way <laughs> right and, now and, this is one of my my goals for the next and, and what about you uh damien well you know as you said like i didn't know it differently um i mean i have to say that volt uh, started digitally as well because i mean if you organize a european movement you know like uh, we work fully uh, you know on, on whatever shared files and and zoom and uh, and all this stuff so for me to go back to that was not so much of an issue. I think it's still a shame, you know, obviously in a, from a very privileged position that I can, or that we all can work digitally um, quite well. And then you, you, you replace the chatter that you have normally with WhatsApp or whatever. I mean, it's, it's possible, um, but it's still quite a shame. I think it's a lot of fun to be in parliament when it's like bustling um, and, and, and can be really cool. Um, I think what the positive thing is that uh, you can cut a lot of the crap. Sorry for, for saying that, but like mm -hmm. you, you no, no, go ahead, of, go ahead. Uh, like a, a lot of this, uh, you know, like this, uh, the lost time that you would spend running from A to B, or that like you have a random conversation that maybe is not that useful. So there's a lot of. I think it's a lot more time efficient, but there's also a lot of loss of interpersonal connection and and of um, like yeah, just the fun of being around. And I think again, like the the thing that was really hardest for me was. And also from a team is not working together and not doing brainstormings together in, in, in one room 
Um, we try to replace that with you know daily check-ins and, and and so on, but it's still it's not the a same. Lot more fun uh, if you yeah. if you're actually in person. Uh. And what about you, Marketa? Anything? Uh... I pretty much have nothing to add. The guys said it uh, <laughs> said it all. We I think we have all the very similar experience. Maybe they were quite uh, pessimistic, so I will add one uh, one notion of what I find uh, good is that uh, actually there's a lot of. Um, media attention and politics uh, and internal party politics going on back you know in your home country and uh, i realized just after you know the pandemic how much i have been missing out and also i do realize you know being from the czech republic and maybe you know dragos will uh, also understand being from romania that uh, special media do not have such an interest in european politics and european politicians and this kind of really helped me to show to to, to get closer to them at least a little bit because I am in Prague I'm in the capital city and I can talk to them more often and they kind of got used to it you know now because otherwise they wouldn't ask me because they would be like oh they are in Bar Brussels you know now we want someone who is here actually so, yeah. unfortunately it's not something that is uh, exclusive to, to, to Romania Czech Republic or so smaller countries uh, I think pretty much in every country uh, the, 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 the MEPs are are not as much uh, consulted by journalists or anything uh, regarding uh, European affairs. I mean, that's, I mean, uh, as a former assistant, I, I knew that uh, it, it got a very uh, frustrating at times for, for MEPs who work very hard on the daily, on the daily basis and then they, nobody is watching what they're doing. So uh, I, I get the, I perfectly get the, the, the frustration. Uh, okay, well, I've seen we've, we've been talking for a while, so let's actually jump into another game since uh, Damien joined, rejoined in the meantime. So uh, I will up set up uh and seem to be let's... the problem child <laughs> nah you're fine so this time everyone goes mute and see you in a minute i feel less professional because you all have cool backgrounds like dagosh and makeda these make kind of thing Don't complain. Uh, I don't even have the luxury of a, of a camera, so you know. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So I found uh, Mikel in, uh, I think it's called navigation. It's when you go from cafeteria to your right, and it's like yeah. the rightest part. And rightest part. Uh, I was, I think, bottom right, it's shield. Is it shield? It's shield or communication. Mm -hmm. uh, so I you were very close. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I passed by at the very beginning. I, I went straight right and then I went straight to, to, to shield because I had tasks to, to, to do there. Uh, so, uh, But I, I didn't see Mikkel. I think I was the first one to, 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 to rush there. So I don't think so I saw. I'm, I'm far, far left. Uh, so really, really far away from you. <laughs> and I'm bottom left, actually. So. so uh, that's actually quite interesting. So Makita either reported herself, basically the, the mm -hmm. red body, and it should yeah. be the ter it's most terrible gameplay ever. But <laughs> oh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, been uh, seen. It's been seen. And Mr. MEP assistant, which I would personally believe it is. Mm. Well, we don't have to vote yet, but uh, oh, we should definitely. You know, kill of course, so. Damian and Dragos do not have any kind of evidence for being uh, yeah, I mean, far left. You know, so well. Did you did you cross each other? Did, did you cross <laughs> each other? Or uh... no. no, I no? didn't see Dragos. I was actually I, I don't know. It took a while, and I just walked left, and then I realized that my map says I have to go right. But anyways. And what kind of tasks are you doing, Damian? I'm not doing any. I just walked <laughs> left actually. And then, okay. I, I mean, the good thing is if you vote for if we vote for someone, and you can later on check a bit, you know, where everybody is. Um, you can see that I'm like uh, really far left. Ooh, it's gone. We can't vote. Yeah, anymore. no, no one, no one was ejected. Yeah. So uh, well, it's another round. So there, let's go mute again. Really... Um, so then it's definitely the MEP guy. I'm going to follow him and uh, see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being bullied, guys. Don't run. You can't run from me. Why are you so fast? <laughs> Don't talk. Am I allowed to talk? 
No, once we are we are in the game, no one is supposed to talk because otherwise it gives know. away things. No. I can't do anything. I need to lose one in the vents. He doesn't know about them. I can find a vent. Tiny bit faster than him, and I have larger vision. Than him. Well, I have very interesting news. I was uh, on cameras and I saw MEP assistant to jump into vent. So what? Uh, I would kind of vote him down. <laughs> I agree. I tried to follow him, but I was fo I was following uh, followed all the time by uh, by by Damien. It was too fast, actually. I started to do tasks because that was a loss of a loss of time. So I, I think the murders um, are faster. I have to say. I think it's definitely no. The, the, there is no. The, the, there is no. The only difference between imposters and uh, and crewmates uh, is the the field of vision. Otherwise, the speed is the same for everyone. And the fact that you can't tell us uh, what's the common task, can you? Sorry? <laughs> well, and My tasks were electrical. I was shield, electrical, uh, and what, did I, what else did I have? Because I was running to the second part of electrical, you know, you It's true that I have to say that maybe we have to reconsider the volcanic. I know we can't. Because I mean, I did follow him, and he did go from like these things to things. Eh? So maybe it is actually Makita. Oh no! Well, How I saw him jump that? into vent. So. But what's wrong with? The I'm vent? I'm being bullied anyway, so I'm, I'm oh, gonna yeah, skip votes and. Once you are it's it's outrageous, I have to say. That, uh, imposters can actually go through vents. Yeah. Uh, they are on the floor, and they can go through one okay. to another, so that they can escape. You know the. Uh, I the would defend my honor. Sooner. Yeah. Okay. Good. But okay. Well, don't worry. You will. And, and you and there's a camera room where you can. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. That's yes. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. But he was actually, after that, me, that, so that's that's kind of afraid. So I went into the camera room to check on him. Uh, that was actually well done because I uh, I was trying to lose uh, Damien. I said, okay, I'm gonna lose him there in the vents, and that way I can I can get someone else uh, and, and pretend no, Damien was following me all around uh, all uh, all along, and uh, and no, you you caught me on the camera. You should have you should have killed him. <laughs> no, because he, he had said openly that he he was following me. So if I had killed him, uh, then I would have uh, put myself uh, like. I accuse myself, so I think the vent was the only play possible. But actually, I, I'm gonna check because I, I do believe that there is no difference of speed between the uh, between the imposters and the. Uh... I'm on no, it's, my phone. It's, it's, it's called skill with a mouse. That's yeah, the yeah. difference. Yeah, I'm scared yeah. with the phone. Uh... <laughs> But maybe yeah. for your information, so that I am not so OP, because, you know, I played this for many, many hours. Uh, there is uh, one common task, which everybody yeah. has. It's usually cables or something else. And, uh, well, you will see it based on uh, the fact that you have to, you know, uh, or downloading stuff. And it's only one of these two. And if imposter can't say what is the common task, he probably didn't do it yet. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh, we're only missing Dragos. Oh, sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem. <laughs> I forgot to, 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 to press the button. Yeah, yeah I, I know, it's a satisfaction of surviving. Uh... <laughs> exactly. I, so at least, I, I mean, I, I, had a, I had the common decency of not murdering uh, an MEP. I, I went for Mikkel. <laughs> so, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> it was revenge. <laughs> Okay. So we are not. I also was obviously mean because I said I would follow you. So I'm, we had, uh, the rule is we're not talking about the game at all. During yeah. The, the, the rule. The basic rule is that apart from the moment where we are in meetings, we're not supposed to talk. No. That's the only moment where we are allowed to talk is during these meetings where we only have like a limited amount of time to discuss and to decide who who is not the imposter. So that's a, otherwise. See, there, if you if you had not uh, said to everyone that you were following me, then I could have murdered you or someone else. Uh, people would not have noticed, and that's yeah. uh, that's that's kind of the thing. That's uh, what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so sorry for that. Yeah, no problem, no problem. 
Uh, okay, let's start the second one. And let's cut the mics. Ah, time. Uh, let's try not to get murdered. Uh, where am I? Let's look at the common task. Which one is the common task? I don't even know. Ah, uh, maybe it's uh, electrical. I don't know. I don't know what's the common task. Ah, oh, I hate. Okay, uh... Get the 315, you can't, no, get away from me. Uh, let's see if I can find a dead body or something to fuse someone. Uh... Okay, so I found Dragos in uh, communication, so that's uh, very south of, uh, of the map. Uh, and the only people, uh, person I saw was Mikael, uh, who was arriving from that direction. Uh, I actually fled him, for, uh, ran from him for a bit because I thought he was going to murder me, and then he went to Electrical. But uh, he's the only one I saw coming from the south. That's why I mentioned that Just being in clarify, Electrical. I, I don't. I am not right. Uh, I am not allowed to, to to speak. Right? No, you're, you're not dead. allowed. You're not allowed. You're, you're dead. Okay. Dead. Don't speak. <laughs> Good. I'm not speaking. I was going to comms to do a task. And I saw Damien running from the direction, uh, and then going after me. So I'm, I'm su uh, suspecting him. You know. <laughs> I was actually just running because I still don't get this map. I was just running to the electrical, and uh, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm still getting confused. But I'm, yeah, I don't know. That's what an imposter would say. But I, I respect the fact that you are playing on a phone, of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mikael, what were you doing? I mean. Well, uh, as 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 aforementioned by yourself, I was uh, what, what is the central thing? Admin, right? I was uh, doing a card swipe and admin, and then I walked past uh, Marquetta, and then uh, walked past you, who were following me a little bit, and then into electrical, and that was about it. Is it possible for people to all have the same task? Because I also had card swipe, and I think Dragos was also uh, doing yeah, card swipe. Yeah, that's the common task actually, and because Mikael knows it, and Damian, um, you know, went from oh. south. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, it's all, that's weird. I, I don't see the the common task. I didn't see it. But anyway, uh, maybe I did it first and uh, don't want it. All right. Let, let's go mute. Uh, okay, so it's either Marketa or. Uh, or Damien. Uh, where the hell am I supposed to go? Ah, oh, web. When in doubt, blame the enemy for distance. Indeed, uh, classic. It's like, oh, I thought. Uh... Okay, big thing. Oh, an easy one. Uh, common. Yes, Rush. Rush. Big. Oh. Well. See, see what uh, what assistants have to go through. Someone who is new to the game, he understood the principle quite quickly. Up. You have a blame Damien, as Marketa was saying. That's on me. That's on me. Oh. Okay. Oh. And boop. And I'm on with my task. Um, God. I think he only needs to kill one more person and he wins. I told well, you so. Damn. Yeah, yeah, I know. Exactly the, uh, the moment I said, oh, I made a mistake, but 
I mean, for, for someone who is like on his second game, uh, not too bad, Damon. Not too bad. <laughs> and on the phone. Nice. And on the phone. And on the phone, indeed. Yeah, that's he's some such a nice. He's such a nice guy. I mean, even when he's a criminal, he. he <laughs> I mean, it's difficult for him to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was very bad at lying. I, I give you yeah. that. I actually went where you were just because uh, Mikael was suddenly acting very strangely and I didn't want to go past him, <laughs> but I should have trusted my instincts. Ah, well. Good instinct. Good instinct. <laughs> so I, I, basically, if there's just two people left, then... Yes, you automatically yeah. win. Okay. So you're uh, in this configuration, you only need like to kill three people and then you you win. Uh, so that's, uh, that's how it, uh, it works. Uh, let's have a bit of a conversation, if you if you don't mind. Uh, so let me switch the settings where you're all on the main screen. So we talked a bit about 2021. Uh, let's talk a bit about the future. Uh, 11 days in the future, to, uh, to, uh, to be exact. So 2022, uh, there will be a new presidency, French presidency. I'm French. I'm very happy about that. Uh, then it's going to be the, the Czech uh, presidency uh, for the for the second semester. Um, and well, actually, since uh, since you, you you didn't have the occasion to speak much, Marketa, I, I will start with you with this question. So, uh, since there will be the, pres the Czech presidency in the in the second semester of 2022, have you been involved into the the, the preparation of this uh, of the agenda of the presidency? Uh, have you been consulted by the government? How, how does it work? Mm -hmm. Well, we just got into the government actually so uh, we still have a lot of work in front of us just today i actually received an email because uh, within the pirate party i uh, i take care of uh, the team for europe uh, european affairs security uh, you know defense etc and international affairs and just today i received a 300 pages long document about uh, the you know plans and uh, well stuff that will uh, the current government deal with for the Czech presidency and uh, my team is supposed to give our opinions on the opinions of previous government you know so that we can uh, change it potentially so a lot of work is ahead of us but to your question yes we can influence it but the work is starting actually now because you know unfortunately we just had elections so we couldn't do it sooner because the previous government did not really consult anything with the uh, opposition Okay, that, that's interesting because I know that, for instance, for the for the French presidency, uh, they were having uh, regular meetings with pretty much all the uh, the MEPs from all the parties, like to coordinate to say, okay, we're going to push for this, we're going to push for that, uh, give have a bit of feedback. Of course, like the the MEPs who are from the uh, from the party of the of the government, so we knew in the in this case were probably uh, more consulted than the other. But I knew that they were they were like still regular meetings. Uh, uh, consultation from the French authority with MEPs from the, from all the all the parties, including those in the opposition, to associate them to the work and say, okay, mm. well, let's see as a, as French uh, French uh, priorities how we can uh, we can push together. So that, uh, yeah, well, I, I of course don't want to uh, go too much into national politics here, but uh, we didn't really have a politician as a prime minister previously. Uh, he was a businessman <laughs> and oligarch, so he didn't really care, you know, that much. Um, so hopefully now, even though I'm not completely in line with the ideology of the new government uh, they still at least do care about the politics and doing it properly so so that's good and uh sorry i didn't follow the the, the, the composition of the new government i know it's a coalition government but uh, uh, are the pirates part of it or are they supporting it only in, in parliament uh, we are not needed in terms of numbers, but we are part of it because we also went into the elections uh, in a coalition yeah. and, uh, you know, we agreed that we will go into coalition as part of the coalition. Okay. And, and speaking of new government, so the, the one who, uh, that has been pretty much under the, the, the spotlight uh, lately is the new German government. Uh, uh, so not 2022, but uh, you, the, new, uh, the new government under Olaf Scholz. Uh, uh, Got to uh, became chancellor like a couple of weeks ago, so I will. Uh, he will get actually to work in, uh, in 2022. So, uh, and there was a lot of uh, tension grabbing uh, around the European policy of the new government because we saw in the new coalition uh, agreement, uh, for instance, uh, the, the the call of the the official, the official position of the coalition that uh, Germany would officially push for uh, the, the the creation of a European federation. Uh, which, to my knowledge, is the first time uh, a, a government actually takes the official position that uh, we want a, we want a, a European federation. So ultimately, that means that they would 
stop to be a, a German government, uh, uh, so to say, it, it would be uh, melted, so to say, inside a, a European government. So, uh, any any insights on, on on that and how why why is there such a European push in the new government, uh, Damien? Yeah, I'll, I'll now give you a bit of a daring theory, which uh, can definitely be uh, you know uh, rejected, um, but. A year ago, the German Greens um, put into their uh, party program the uh, like their foundation program that they want to have a European um, Republic, and um, they like a lot of the Greens told me that on the party assembly where this was discussed, this was also done because they wanted to ensure that Volt doesn't steal any more seats uh, from them. And then <laughs> half a year ago, the um, FDP, so the Liberals, did the same. They also put it in their, in their election program. And again, I talked to some of the MEPs, and they said, yeah, obviously, we use this pro-Europeans. We used Volt as a threat. Um, and so now uh, these two parties are obviously you know, together in, in government, and they have this very pro-European program, which makes me extremely happy. And it, it honestly, um, you know, even if we only contributed an inch to it, um, I think it's really cool. And it's really the theory of change of Volt that we thought about when we started. That in the end we need to steal and, and be annoying in every you know European member state, um, so that people actually adopt our positions and and push for more European integration. And so, this makes me extremely happy. I think it's a very strong agreement. And um, I just I think from a Volt perspective, we will now uh, try to ensure that it actually you know annoy them again to see that it actually happens because it's one thing to write that we want a European you know integration process, uh, European parliamentary democracy, or European federal republic, and the other is to actually push for it and, and develop a clear timeline together with other countries. Yeah, so um, I think our task is not done, but my hope really is now, if you ask me what I'm looking forward to, you know, um, is to build uh, Volt chapters in all European countries um, and then hopefully steal a couple of seats from uh, from all parties <laughs> so that all of them then say, let's go for integration. Or at and least like the bigger ones, yeah. But do you feel it's in line with what uh, what people are thinking? Because what uh, what people I mean like regular citizens? Because before the stream, I was looking like to prepare a bit uh, the uh, the latest Eurobarometer and uh, from spring 2021. And I looked at the at the at the page for Germany, and I was actually surprised because I, I saw that the uh, the level of trust that German citizens have towards the EU uh, is lower than the average of the EU and actually lower, the lowest from all the member states I consulted. So Czech Republic, Romania, and Spain and Germany, uh, from memory, it was at 47 or 46% of trust to, to, towards the EU. So, but uh, whose fault is that? You know, the question is a bit, um, what are politicians doing? Yeah? And most of them go for the easy option of saying like, we are national politicians and the Europeans, they're just annoying us, you know? And if with something good comes, they say, that was my idea. And if something bad comes, they say, oh, I was Europe. So I think it, what we really need is uh, courageous leaders in politics that actually tell a positive narrative about what Europe could be. And this is not happening very often. And I mean, that leads then, you know, in, in the UK is it's such a good example because there, even the pro-Europeans try to say, yeah, Europe is bad, but there's also some good side, you know? But uh, to understand that this is the biggest success product, I mean, I don't have to give the speech about why Europe is great in, in, mm. in this context, yeah? But I think what we need is just a bit more of courage and, um, and to also spin and expand these positive facts that are there in a way that is actually somehow arriving. I mean, that's, that's our goal. Yeah? I actually need to get a charger, so... <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, in the meantime, I, I will ask questions to, to, to Dragos. Uh, so, Dragos, uh, the, the thing I wanted to ask you for, for about 2022, okay, so I, I also consulted like the uh, the vaccination rates uh, COVID, because COVID is the big, uh, the thing that has been obsessing us for, for the last couple of years, and I expect that it will be the same for, for part, at least part of 2022, and I saw that the, the vaccination rate in, in Romania was pretty low. It's uh, around... 40%, uh, I'm just checking my notes, yes, 40% vaccination rate. And to compare, to compare, like in Czech Republic, it's 60%. Uh, in Germany, it's 70%. And in Spain, uh, it was uh, 80%. So how, how do you explain this uh, this low rate of vaccination, or full vaccination, what I, what I mean there? Uh, and how do you see uh, this vaccin vaccination rate being improved in 2022? Yeah, so there are a multitude of factors going on. Um, first of all, um, the level of trust in public authorities in Romania is very low. And when the, the government is saying or starts to say, you need to, uh, you know, uh, you need to, to, to get a jab, um, then people are starting to uh, 
to, to, to try to figure out why uh, why the government is insisting on that. Then when you have, you know, public figures, you know, going on fake news and uh, more or less uh, uh, promoting conspiracy theories, <laughs> and uh, on the other hand, the media is not actually, uh, is more or less promoting those figures because they create conflict and, uh, you know, panem and chilechenses, so, so it's, it's good to have, a, you know, a show. Um, uh, with with these kind of uh, really dangerous people that are instilling, um, you know, resistance to vaccinations and so on, that the, 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 then all these factors cumulated um, are, are actually, um, you know, not helping at all. Also, there was a mistake of the former prime minister, in the sense that uh, he last last summer he more or less uh, suggested together with the president that. Uh, uh, COVID is, uh, has ended and uh, we won the fight. So basically everyone relaxed massively and, and we, uh, we then had trouble in explaining people why we are asking them again to, you know, to go and um, you know, push the vaccination process. So, so um, I would uh, really believe that right now um, people have actually started to understand um, the fact that um, you know the vaccination uh, is, is is a process that uh, that really it's a question of personal responsibility towards the others and not only you know something to protect yourself and um, given the fact that we had a death toll rate um, I think that we were uh, at some time in uh, October if I'm not mistaken uh, the third place in the world in terms of daily death uh, death rate or something like that this has actually influenced people to, to start, uh, you know, uh, getting vaccinated. So I'm optimistic uh, for, for the next year, but it will be difficult. Um, and if I also may add something related uh, now on, on the previous topic of uh, the next presidencies, uh, we at Renew Europe, uh, we were quite an example because the French presidency invited us, invited us in Paris. We had a coordinators reunion in Paris with uh, you know direct to one to direct mini uh, meetings with ministers that are uh, involved in the agenda of the presidency. So, so this was uh, something very very useful, and uh, it was a very good rehearsal for the French government, uh, uh, the, the ministers, uh, before they would come to Parliament uh, and present uh, the, their priorities. Uh, actually, soon enough in January, and I, and for us as well as coordinators was uh, very useful in understanding the underpinnings of the of the priorities that the French presidency is uh, putting forward. So um, I just wanted to add that as well. Okay, uh, I'll ju just, uh, I, I will give the, the uh, a voice uh, to the, the silent member of the, of the, of the, of our Zoom call to Mikhail, who has been kind enough to help us uh, play uh, tonight. So, so Mikhail, I'll give you the opportunity to, 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 to ask a question to, uh, to, to our guest uh, tonight. So ask a general question so that uh, anyone can uh, uh, can answer answer in pitching and also in the meantime chat if you want to ask questions don't you can suggest question I'm looking at it so I can, I can relay your question so Mikael uh, what would you like to ask uh, our guest tonight oh man that's a lot of pressure uh, <laughs> I, 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 I guess while stalling for time I'll come up with uh, a little uh, general question in the form of um, what what uh, what has made you hopeful about the future in the past year Okay, I will, I will start on this one. So, I mean, the response that people have actually put forward in uh, times of hardship during the pandemic was impressive. So the fir those solidarity moments where everyone mobilized and tried and started to, to help their neighbors and, you know, young people helping the elderly and, and you know, this kind of thing that happened at the European level as well in terms of solidarity and, and completely different than the austerity in 2007 and 8. Um, and, and the simple fact that, that uh, it, you know, in, in times of hardship, you have this kind of uh, mobilization and, and, and the, 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 the social tissue is, uh, is recomposing itself. I mean, that's really, really great. And I, I do believe that if there, if there is scope for hope, next year is because of the fact that people get united when you know i, I should put it non academically ship in japan so um that, that's something that i i discovered and it was really really 
uh, important for me and that this is the kind of thing that I'm trying to promote right now and showing that this is the path forward both at national level and at European level as well. And, and what about you, uh, Marketa? What gives you hope for, for next year? Well, originally when Mikel asked this question, I, I kind of got depressed because uh, for, for me it was quite a quite a rough year in terms of uh, uh, well everything uh, work uh, also also the hate uh, uh, that I received also the development within our party and within uh, our country so you know thinking about this I was like oh my god I have nothing to say but then I realized you know that uh, there is a saying something like uh, well, I don't know the saying, <laughs> and it would be uh, bullshit anyway, but um, I don't know how to translate it for, for English, but uh, um, that when there is a big hardship, you also find uh, like uh, those who uh, actually really help you or uh, those, you know, that matter. And in this regard, I think this, uh, this year was really fruitful and it gives me hope in general because I met so many amazing people that, uh, you know, I just can't stay depressed or uh, pessimistic about the future. I know that they are there and that they want to make changes. And even if on all of our paths, there are people blocking us, um, either evil or just dumb, um, you know, if we if we, if we prevail, uh, I see in these people really bright future. So so that really motivates me. What about you, Damien? I have to say, my answer is uh, the, exactly the two points that Makita uh, I just said. So I think uh, what I see in vulnerability um, is that people open up to each other with uh, you know honest uh, kind of an honest way. And then if if that happens, then people actually reciprocate that. I don't know if that's a good word, but yep. like. By, by being honest about how they feel themselves and that you know maybe at home something you know and uh, kind of this more humane interaction of seeing that we all know superheroes but that we all have issues and that we all have uh, you know uh, can talk about them i think is much more human to me and the second part was exactly that i was actually um, at a school event uh, organized for by like these young young uh, if you want social startup dudes who um, invited 10,000 school kids to an online event with the national football players and like a lot of people because they said we need to inspire people especially in these times of uh, you know remote uh, schooling and uh, to just see that like you know all these amazing football stars and whatever and music stars and whatever hanging out with these kids uh, online which was so easy to organize in a way uh, but like obviously a lot of work by them but I, I found really uh, cool. It's, uh, it's called Teach Conference, and I, I just yeah, I have these kind of um, initiatives by individuals that just see, see uh, ways to make uh, cool things happen make me happy. Uh, and a couple of questions now, uh, more politic, uh, more political, more on policy. So uh, I have a question in the chat uh, who is asking where do you stand about the place of nuclear uh, in the in the in the EU? So as you know, in the EU there is a a debate of what, what is called the, the green taxonomy, so a European label to try to direct investment towards uh, green energy or transition energies. And there's a debate on whether uh, nuclear should be included in this green taxonomy, so receive this label. So do you think that uh, nuclear should benefit from, uh, from this green label or not? Who wants to start? I mean, if you like a very, very clear cut answer, Damien should yeah. start actually. <laughs> okay, I, I, I won't clear, uh, clear cut answer, that way we can ask more questions. So Damien, clear cut answer. Um, so it's actually not 100% easy because we are an innovation friendly party. Yeah. Um, but the, the <laughs> Damien is, seems surprised. <laughs> no, no, but the, the, the issue is that, um, I mean, our stance on current nuclear technology is an absolute no. Yeah? So it should not be included in the taxonomy, 100%. So, but we are in, in general not 100% close to, to future technologies, you know, future levels of, uh, you know, technology to, to figure out what's happening because we are open for all new innovations to, to look at. But uh, with the current technology and the current waste issues and the current risks, uh, it's, it's a clear no for us. And Vago, since you, uh, you threw Damien under the bus, what about you? <laughs> yeah, so um, for us in Renew Europe, we have quite a debate because we are a centrist group that. Uh, is actually both uh, very very interested about the environment at the same time we are uh, you know very much promoting market economy um, and uh, and the industry as well um, and f I mean if you even follow uh, the very very recent dec declarations of Thierry uh, Breton the commissioner for industry 
it seems that uh, both uh, nuclear and gas uh, might actually be seen in a better uh, light a little bit for at, at least for the transition and um, my position is actually that um, uh, if we if we would really like to avoid what was right now uh, happening across Europe and not only in worldwide as well with a spiraling of energy prices and uh, you know, affecting vulnerable categories and entrepreneurs likewise, you really need to provide a transition that is uh, is rather smoother than just by banning immediately, you know, gas and nuclear. So in my view, nuclear, just to answer the question directly, in my view, nuclear should be considered um, a source of energy that needs, needs still needs investment. And um, this is actually very valid for my own constituency as well. Um, we, we actually uh, are, are having two reactors that needs to be, uh, um, you know, built up uh, and uh, we have actually uh, postponed that project for a lot and I really believe that we need those reactors uh, in place. And, and what about you, Marketa? Well, this is boring. We are not in a disagreement <laughs> at all. <laughs> Uh, pirates are also like uh, even though we are in the greens group uh, we are very uh database techno optimistic uh, party uh looking at innovations so uh of course that uh you know i kind of combine uh, the opinions that damien and dragos uh, uh, already mentioned that uh you know we are looking into new uh technologies and innovations and that should be our core issue let's say even investments in mm -hmm. uh, uh in uh, uh you know science and uh, exploration of new technologies and secondly well uh yes it's not uh possible to switch off one source uh and not have fully capable one uh, another source to uh fully uh fully um um sorry to, <laughs> uh, yeah to, switch from one to a source of energy to, yeah, to, to, yeah, to yeah. another yeah but so, so to, of course can, sorry that's, okay that you finish yeah uh, yeah, I will just finish uh, the sentence that says, of course, that uh, there needs to be something, uh, some bridge in between. And the nuclear energy seems like a, like a proper bridge right now. But of course, it's also needs to, uh, you know, uh, need to say that if we do not uh, deal in the techno-optimistic universe with, for instance, the, the, the trash uh, and uh, everything that comes out of using this, then uh, uh, this should not be like the, you know, the final line. This should definitely not be something but I think which we stop. There is a difference between um, Dragos and maybe Maketa and myself, um, because, I mean, currently what you introduced this topic with is whether, you know, green energy, sorry, nuclear energy should be seen as green under the taxonomy. Yeah, and here there, there's a clear, uh, like a clear no from us, yeah, because the current technology is not green. I mean, that's that's basically what what we are saying, um, and so I think you know this means potentially millions, maybe billions of non-funding funding and so on. So just to say that there is a stark difference, I think, in, in the approach to the current nuclear technologies uh, from from us to the others. Yeah, yeah, but at, at the same time, I, I thought it was interesting, at least the the, 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 the position for, for, for Marketa and, and you, Damien, because you don't have like the, the, the typical, like what I would call the typical green uh, position. You're, you're a pirate and you vote, so you're not actually from the green parties, but when you talk to, to, uh, to green, actual green MEPs, they would say, no, uh, as a principle, uh, nuclear is is a bad technology where it uh, it, it has too much risk, so we should we should not even look into it. Uh, we don't trust the, even the the potential uh, positive development about, about nuclear. So it, in a way, you're more open to the to the technology to its potential future development than uh, what you can hear from uh, from uh, what I would call regular uh, greens, like uh, from the actual from actual green party. So that that's uh, that's interesting as well. This uh, this, uh, this nuance, uh, even if like. Uh, like you mentioned, Damien, maybe uh, Dragos is a bit more open to the, to the idea of including the uh, nuclear as a transition energy in the, in the green uh, uh, taxonomy. Uh, another uh, very quick, uh, very yes-no answer uh, there. Uh, in January, you will have to elect a new president of the European Parliament. Uh, and there is kind of a clash, uh, there was kind of a clash between the EPP and the SND because the SND wanted to keep the presidency of the parliament while the EPP wants to take it as per a deal that they they found in 20, 24, uh, 2019 sorry uh, so now there is an official candidate of the EPP uh, Roberta Metzola from Malta 
so question very uh, very quick will you uh, in January vote in favor of uh, full Marketa uh, Marketa no <laughs> you're not a president yet <laughs> vote for Roberta Metzola uh, from the EPP in January for president of the European Parliament uh, Dragos I can't answer with a yes or no thing because uh, I mean I, I, we are involved in group negotiations right now so I will need you to give you a political answer um, so the political answer is that I love Roberta. She's a wonderful um, MEP. Uh, she has been critical to key files, and and I think that she's uh, you know a very very strong candidate for the position. But this being said, the official position of our group <laughs> is yet will, to be defined. <laughs> will depend on the on how we are going to maintain a majority that actually leads to. You know this uh, this uh, parliament to, uh, to 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 put forward its agenda, and I think that usually understandings need to be uh, to be uh, kept, and uh, it's very important uh, if we are actually uh, keeping the status quo and uh, we are actually fulfilling uh, our promises, uh, because this is the way we can gain trust, and then based on that. Obviously, the consequence related to the vote is quite uh, simple to guess. So, uh, but I, I guess from, from what you're saying, there is a, a positive a priori regarding uh, Mrs. Betsa. You, you, as always, you are a very, uh, very good reader of political <laughs> reality. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so, so it's correct. <laughs> what about you, Damien? Uh, it's, for us, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, the Grand Coalition is always a bit the question, are the Greens in or not? Um, and I think that will also be defined by what Roberta Metzela will potentially offer um, the Greens. Yeah? But maybe as a more general remark, um, so first of all, I really like her too. <laughs> but as a second uh, general remark, um, what I find maybe sad is the wrong word but like um interesting is that obviously you know you try to get majorities and this is done even before the elections um but i would have loved to have a run you know like to, to have an actual kind of competing campaign of different candidates from the different groups saying this is what i stand for this is what i like you know to have this across the european media like you know streamlined uh, or like streamed sorry <laughs> twitched whatever across um to 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 show what people stand for and then to have an actual election where people are free to do this with a secret vote i think would would be super cool for the european democracy so I'm a bit sad that these pre-deals preempt uh, a bit more public and, and individual choice. If, if but I but then, uh, I'll be, before I, I uh, first, Marketa, do you have something a different position from uh, from, uh, from from Damien or not? Uh, otherwise, I will ask you something else, uh, and you will be the first on the, on the line to complete on the, on that. So, do you have something on? The... Uh, feel free to continue. I know we don't have that much time. Okay. So uh, then, still uh, uh, to, to to follow up on what uh, what you, you just said, Damien, like. As a question, what is the role of the president of the European Parliament? Is it a political role in the sense that uh, he's just here to 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 aid the administration and act as a, a facilitator between the between the political groups? And then that's why you have a negotiation. The, the designation of the, par the president of the Parliament is a deal between political groups, or is it uh, is it more than that? Does the president of the Parliament has a public role and is more than the representative role in as in a way, an initiative, uh, a right of initi uh, initiative in the parliament, and to to to, to weigh on the way that the parliament works. So, where would you uh, where would you see the role of the president of the parliament? I mean, if uh, Marketa wants to go first, uh, I mean for me. Marketa, very... yeah, yeah, Marketa, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I thought you were asking Damian because no, no, I was, I was, uh, I was following up to his remark, but uh, yeah, you were following up to him, so that's why I thought you want to ask him. Um, because uh, yeah, okay, I, I will try to answer because I am I've never really uh, focused on the board of the European Parliament uh, as something that uh, is of high interest to me. Sorry, I just uh, you know have a lot of work uh, being uh, the first term MEP with my work, uh, not uh, yet alone with uh, the work of uh, of the the, the chairmanship, but. Uh, in general, I would say that uh, it's still a democratic board. Therefore, even if you are a president, you still have your co-presidents, you know, vice chairs, and you have to agree with them. And there is still the home system. So you have to agree with various groups. So I think it's more of a um, 
prestigious position for the group also and to some extent of course good position for the for the person itself uh, herself or himself uh, to to step in a little bit however i've never uh, honestly seen sasoli to do something uh, you know something more and maybe it's just because of sasoli <laughs> uh, and maybe metsula will prove us wrong <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was always a decision of the, the whole port. Uh, and I have my colleague Marcel Kolaj at work in there, so I know that what they agreed on, that was presented. It was never like a solo action of one, one person. So, yeah, it's more, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, can I throw my... Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, so basically, um, the, the European Parliament goes on these two layers, administrative layer and political layer. And you have you know, presidency, administrative level, CCC, administrative level, and then committees, um, uh, boards, also administrative level. And then you have coordinators and the COP that are the political layers. So I would I would actually see that the, the president is playing a representation role rather than a political role. But at the same time, with some, probably with more with someone like Roberta than, you know, other people, uh, we might see, you know, uh, bits and pieces of initiatives and of, you know, transparency, uh, you know, getting closer to some of the segments of the population that are so important. For instance, what I share with Roberta is uh, our openness to involve youth in, in decision making at European level and, and as the general, you know, principle to allow youth to be present, uh, you know, in, in the European reality rather than uh, you know just being told that they are the future you know mm. they, they, you will be in the future someday so so i think that um, if you get a president that that is actually more or less uh, uh, getting people in love with europe uh, that's something that uh, you don't need to have a politically charged mandate for that you are doing it because you care about europe so i, I would really love to see indeed a president that cares about europe uh, you know deeply shares his values and would be a, a, a very good embodiment of, of, of you know how we would like uh, you know the future of Europe to, to, to be like. But otherwise, indeed, it shouldn't be a, more or less a politically charged uh, um, function. So I expect from the presidency the neutrality and representation that uh, that is actually given by the mandate that is discussed in the COP. So that's how I see. I um, disagree slightly, um, and that is because. I mean, for, for me, uh, I'm a parliamentarian in the sense that um, I think parliament uh, should be a strong body. Yeah? So if I think about a future European democracy, it's a parliamentary democracy, not a presidential democracy where you directly elect a president. And for that to happen, I think we need to get parliament ready uh, as soon as possible to be the best it can be. Um, and it, it is not. Yeah. I mean, the debating culture still sucks. I'm sorry to be. <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, be, be blunt. Uh, huh? it's, uh, we're on Twitch. Oh, you can be blunt. Like it's 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 a it's very bad debating culture um, because everybody just gives their one minute about their own the stuff um, it, and that's true actually for committee almost as well but especially obviously in the plenary and um, there's you know our hearings are boring there should be much more like a u.s senate hearing and there's a lot of other stuff where i think we can do improvements and also i think if you compare schultz uh, s and d a social, social democrat um president versus sasoli and i can say that because they're both <laughs> sort of democrats and you can see that Schulz uh, played much more of a power game also within the three institutions. And I do want a strong representation of parliament when it comes to these three institutions, you know, meeting each other and having deals made, be they inter institutional agreements or on budget or whatever. And so I would really like to have an extremely strong and active and visible um, person at the top of the parliament. That doesn't mean that they say, you know, I want nuclear in or out the taxonomy. I don't think that's their role, yeah? but I, I do think they have a political strategic representative role um, where we need a really strong candidate uh, to do that. Okay, well, what I will... Thank you for the, the very actually interesting answers on, on, on the perspective of uh, what is the role of the parliament in the, in the end. So, uh, I'm looking at our time. I will suggest that we do a very final game and then we conclude, uh, we, we conclude the, uh, the, the, the stream tonight. Is that if that's fine for everyone. So, I think I have to run because I'm uh, oh, late late for uh, for uh, like a birthday dinner. So I'm oh okay. Well, if to, uh, if that's uh, if uh, that's to, uh, <laughs> to the party, <laughs> so I think I'd be a bit uh, impolite if I if I don't no 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 problem. Well, in that in that case, uh, I will give you my my thanks, Mr. Mr. Bozolager, for for taking uh, taking the time to answer 
uh, us tonight. Uh, chat, make sure to, to, to thank Damien for, for, for his time. Uh, Marketa, da Dragos, do you have time to, for one last game? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, let me... Thanks a lot for all the questions. Thank you, Damien. Bye bye. Bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Uh, Mikael, I didn't ask you, but uh, you're, you're down from one final game? It's cool I, up my, I am um, I am just a pro gamer as ever. Yeah, you're pro gamer as ever. Oh, it's cool <laughs> up my my camera setting. The fact that Damien left. Uh, give me a second. Uh, I'm gonna fix that. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Improvisation on stream, as always. Uh, up and. There's some pro OBSing right there. Yeah, exactly. That uh, really pro OBSing. Don't look at it. I'm ashamed uh, about it. Okay, host, uh, pool players. Uh, let me send you. Chat. Until you are sending us the code, I think that Damien introduced a debate. Uh, I mean, on a projected future. That was quite uh, quite nice, and I enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he does make a, a very good. I mean, the, the the debating culture in the parliament is is mm. not a debating debating culture, no. whether in plenary it's, it's or, in a, or in yeah. a or in 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 committee. It's just a, a succession of statements. They, they, uh, that, that's that's a bit sad. I mean, personally, I uh, even when I was an assistant, and even now in my professional life, uh, I don't watch the plenary debates unless I'm, I really, really have to. And I will watch like the, the very beginning and the very end because that's where the commission, the council and the rapporteurs are speaking, which is where you will have the, the, the thing that matter. True. There is a place where you do have a debate. You have coordinators meeting uh, and there mm -hmm. is actually quite nice. I can tell you from this as yeah. an insider that, that those meetings are quite interesting uh, and they need to be prepared and it's with the whole... Uh, nine yards of negotiation and so on. So th those are quite interesting. Yeah. And uh, what about you, uh, Market? Uh, what would you change about the debating, debating culture? The, uh, forget about uh, the game. Let's let's chat uh, about Parliament uh, while we're playing. <laughs> uh, so should I play while chatting? Yeah, yeah. Well, play yeah. play uh, as best as you can while while chatting. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I would probably change in the debating culture. Um, well, as, as was already mentioned, more debating, actually. Uh, that's probably not surprising. Um, wait a second. Uh, I need to... <laughs> this is difficult. No, no, no problem. And, I mean, be, be, be beyond changing the, the, the debating culture, I mean, we have, like, right now, the, 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 the Conference on the Future of Europe, which is supposed to uh, gather what, uh, what Europeans are thinking about Europe, about its potential future. Uh, and there is a debate about what should be the the, the, uh, the role of uh, this, the recommendation of, of citizens. Uh, do you think they should be like mandatory? Do you think it's uh, it should be just a, a basis for discussion? So, how do you see that? Um, yeah, well, I'm quite disappointed in how the conference for the future of Europe is going now, um, because uh, it was all you know um, big hype of how all the all the institutions will talk to each other how all the institutions will uh will cooperate and really listen to people and now it's more like european parliament is hyping people to join people don't know that it's happening because nobody is really talking about it in their home countries uh council already says that they will not you know uh, do any changes coming out of it commission is like well oh, maybe we will do something uh, it's yeah so so sorry to, to brag about it so much but uh, um it's uh, exhaustive because everybody still only talks about how we need a change but uh, it never happens and um i don't think uh, that uh, this is how we actually do change but uh, uh actually damien is part and i think one of the main coordinators of a group uh, that kind of is trying to change this uh we are sending letters to the to the boards and to sasoli all the time and uh, we are asking for a change in the debating in how you know everything is perceived etc so so I'm glad that Damien and others, of course, are doing uh, doing this. And it's usually, and you know, not to offend um, our older colleagues, but it's usually younger uh, younger people uh, there. And it kind of, you know, how and, to say it? 
it uh, motivates me that, uh, that it really makes sense that motivated people usually young ones maybe even anyone are joining and, and what about you uh, Douglas? what's your what's your stand on the on the conference and future of europe are you disappointed with uh with how it is do you think it's much noise about nothing uh no i mean i'm uh i'm actually I, i'm not disappointed uh i i believe uh i believe that uh um the the debate that we have and with the people that got involved uh that, that was something uh something quite good and i appreciate uh the the whole setup now uh, obviously I mean, we can be pessimistic about the outcome, outcome, or we can be optimistic about it. I, I, I do believe that um, even if it's not yet clear if there will be uh, um, uh, legislative changes after the Conference of the Future of Europe, I think that the conclusions would actually we will not be ignored. And um, I, I do believe that uh, the, the kind of debate that we had. Uh, uh, was useful. Now, um, also on the culture, on the debate culture in the parliament, I was actually doing academic debate in high school and so on, and I was always, uh, you know, enjoying that. I, I think that um, this is something that we can actually change even during this mandate. Uh, we don't need a conference on the future of Europe to, to change the debate culture in the European Parliament. Uh, because of the pandemic, we gave up uh, on the on the blue cards and you know the the the, 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 the little things that we had there that were allow that were actually allowing us to intervene and create debates. I do believe that that this is something that we can we can still change with the with the COP. So uh, that's that's not you, we don't need the entire conference on the future of Europe to change that. What Damien was actually saying that was relating to the. Conference on the Future of Europe um, was uh, was something different. Was uh, the fact that um, uh, he sees the Parliament's role in, in being, you know, as the key institution, and uh, and that's uh, that's actually the the, the thing. And uh, for for that, we need to 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 uh, indeed to to change quite a few things. Um, that's that's correct. And but uh, generally speaking, you're not. Uh... So you don't think that there is something in Enrich Oh, uh, Michael, you're I lost. I thought so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I that's... was again in the, navig uh, in the camera room. And yeah, I, I saw that and you were literally in the next room. My, my body, my, 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 my corpse was literally in the room next to you. I was like, just leave the room and look at it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't worry Please. about it. Just keep talking about the future of Europe. Pretend I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you think like the so, so for you, the, if I understand, Dragos, there is not necessarily like a need for for the conference of future Europe to be like a, a huge thing for for things to 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 evolve. Uh, you can do already if, uh, stuff under the current rules. Did I understand yeah, that right? I, I, for in terms of the debate culture in the in the in the parliament, yes. In terms of the uh, institutional power playing. Um, that that's going to be more difficult but we are from the parliament side we are actually winning small things all the time even uh, regarding the rrf the recovery and resilience facility uh, the role that the parliament has right now in a financial instrument that has been developed it's actually w without a precedent so so if you look at all the other programs the commission is just doing them with delegated acts and that's it. And we do have the scrutiny and we can call commissioners, but we don't have that level of involvement. So I think that right now, in terms of the governance, I mean, the European Parliament has actually won a little bit of, uh, you know, power uh, over the council, I, or actually in balancing the council. So there are these little tiny things that you can do and when you are negotiating and imposing things and so on. And, and I think that the European Parliament is actually growing stronger and stronger. I mean, if you look and how we put forward things like the own resources, the rule of law, and all the other things. I mean, we pushed the council, uh, and we pushed, and we pushed, and we got it. Um, so I'm quite happy about it. But what, again, Damien was suggesting something more important to have the entire culture as being, you know, uh, elected based and so on, and uh, maybe even the right to initiate legislation that right now is the monopoly of the commission. Um, that's for that, you obviously need the uh, you know, a change of the treaties and so on and so forth. So, so we, let's let's do our job and 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 have this incremental improvement as much as we can in this legislature because I think 
the fact that we are right now two thirds new members uh, in the parliament helps a lot. We don't have the path dependency or the mm. inertia uh, that uh, usually uh, was happening in the past, where you know members of the second legislature were ruling and dominating all the newbies. I think that with two thirds new members uh, in the parliament, uh, there there was uh, actually a refreshing, uh, you know, a refreshing wave. Uh, happening and, and 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 I do believe that even with you know people like Kita and Damien, um, I mean it's clear that that you are coming with uh, you know disruptive ways to do things better um, and, and closer to the citizens and and, and again uh, I think that this should be visible. I, I hope that it's visible. But I I, I mean uh, what I've actually read I was. Uh, reading a report about the trust in the European Parliament. I think that, Markita, you received that as well. We, we, we all MEPs. And we are at the highest trust of the citizens since 2007, if I'm not mistaken. The, yes, the report indeed. Was, yeah. so, so I think that we are, this must be that we're doing something good <laughs> there, you know, somehow. All right. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. So the chat is, is discussing uh, who is federalist and who is not in, a, in, in the EU. So just another day in my chat. Uh, not, nothing, uh, uh, no, nothing new there. Uh, I'm looking at the time. I don't want to, 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 to exhaust you more than you are. It's, a, it's a end of December. Uh, I think uh, you, uh, you all earned uh, some, uh, some rest. Uh, so I, w I, w I will let you actually do a uh, conclusion uh, in the sense I will let you say uh, final words to, to, to our... Uh, to, to our audience, uh, so the floor is yours. Uh, Marketa, conclude, uh, conclude. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, thanks to everybody who have, was listening and of course also who is following MEP Assistant because I think he's doing a very good job at uh, promoting uh, the EU. And uh, well, I've, uh, I've checked the chat uh, uh, sometimes and I saw that uh, there was this kind of narrative that the EU has a bad PR or is yeah. actually doing bad PR. And I just wanted to mention that uh, it's not just the EU doing or not doing something it's also about what the others are doing to it you know um, being from also the Czech Republic I know how the media uh, talks about the EU or rather not talk about the EU at all and then it's really difficult to do PR if nobody cares about yeah. you so I would kind of say to the chat also if there are you know any people uh, that have some presence on social media or just talk in pubs with their friends uh, try to be you know uh, try to do the PR for the EU, it won't do itself. <laughs> and thank you. What about you, Douglas? Final words. So um, I, I think that the best PR possible that we have these days is the vaccination campaign, the fact that, that we have this certificate and we move together. And for those people that have their eyes to notice that, I mean, they have noticed. So I, I am really proud to be a European right now. And, and I think that these are good times. Um, they, are, they, 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 they could have been really dark times, but they are actually good times in actually you know, developing the, the European project. Um, this being said, um, it's not that the institutions are making the difference. It's people that make the difference. You know, it's Markita, Damien, to uh, some extent myself, and all the others that are actually doing our job. It's, it's about the fact that MEPs are nothing without their assistance, and that's ah. uh, you know, you know, really important. I, I think that you know <laughs> the teams that are behind us are, are so much more relevant to some you know debates that you are guys having on on Twitch and, and so on. So so it's it's about you know the little and tiny things that are done by you know all the people involved. I don't think that we sh we can expect uh, you know everything to change from uh, the president of the commission or the council or the parliament it's 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 us considering ourselves a big team so you know not necessarily team of the european parliament team of the commission team of the council in europe that's actually what what should count and and for that i mean i think it's worth fighting for uh, because uh, again what has been accomplished in the eu it's 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 really amazing and i'm not talking about the you know the textbook stuff with peace and avoiding conflict it's mm -hmm. it's about the kind of prosperity that we are enjoying today, uh, and 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 for for Marquita and for myself, coming you know uh, from really difficult periods during the communist time, the kind of achievements that our countries have actually 
put forward as, as member uh, states of the union. It's really, really amazing. Uh, and so this, all this being said, uh, again, I have this optimistic uh, perspective towards the future. I think that we should not just stay with our arm crossed and wait for someone else to do it. Uh, to do it. I think that it's, it's our job to do that. And for all of you uh, watching and listening and uh, really enjoying, hopefully, this, this evening, uh, again, uh, my hope is with you as well, uh, putting uh, a little bit of effort to, to make Europe a, a better place. Actually, the Conference of the Future of Europe is not about someone giving us the ideas how to, to, to make Europe better. It's about all of us realizing how important it is to get involved. And again, this being said, uh, a big thanks, my persistent Mikkel, it was really a pleasure to, to, to share this evening. Uh, Markita, Damien is not here anymore, but Markita, coffee in January, as we agreed, we had the, you know, made a good team. Um, and, and um, you know, happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Uh, that's that's uh, what uh, we all deserve. And uh, we need a little bit tranquil of, of tranquility of uh, the dear ones. So thank you again from my side. Well, th thank you both of you and thanks to Damien, who already left, but uh, I will send him an email after afterwards. Uh, th thank you, Mik uh, Mikhail, as well for, for, for taking, uh, for helping me out. Uh, so I wish you all a f chat, of course, make sure to, to, to thank our guest, our uh, guest uh, tonight. Uh, stay with me, I will do a quick conclusion uh, afterwards about season three. Uh, I will not uh, keep you any longer, uh, Marta Dragos. Uh, thanks again for, for your time. Uh, I wish you a, a lot of rest, uh, good holidays, Merry Christmas, uh, and uh, I hope to see you sometime uh, on, the, on the channel in the future. So have a, have a good evening uh, and see you soon. Look Thank forward. you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye, Chad. <laughs> Bye, Chad. All right, uh, so now I switch to the discussion panel. Let me up switch off Zoom. All right, so uh, a bit of a, uh, I don't want to say messy. I never do anything messy on, this, on, the, on the channel, but uh, uh, it, it, it was touch and go from, uh, from, uh, from, from, time, to, from time to time. Uh, oh, Icaros, long time no see. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, you, you, we missed you on the on the chat. Uh, anyway, so I hope that you enjoy uh, the, uh, the the event uh, and the discussions. Uh, do let me know the feedback uh, if, if you if you uh, if you liked it. Uh, do uh, do let me know, and I will try to organize uh, more on the, of that in the future. I saw some people wanted the MEPs playing uh, Age of Empire. Uh, I can't promise anything, but uh, yeah, if if you if you liked it, if you enjoyed it. Uh, do let me know uh, here on Discord, uh, anywhere, that's, uh, that's always good to add feedback. Now, let me talk to you briefly about Season 3, because that was the final stream of Season 2. Uh, I will be back in January, uh, probably mid-January, with uh, Season 3, which will last from January until uh, mid-July, probably. I, I need to, to work out the, the, uh, the, the schedule, I need to organize the schedule, actually. I, I'm sending emails. Uh, left and right and center to, to everyone to try to get uh, get uh, people to do interviews. Uh, what can I tell you about season three without spoiling too much? Uh, if you, for those of you who have been with me at the very at the beginning of season two, so it's September, you remember that I have said back then that I was going to stream a lot, uh, so four days a week, uh, up to four days a week, and as an experiment and to see if I could uh, if I could hold it or not. Uh, uh, for season three, I will uh, have to reduce a little bit the amount of streaming because uh, I have to say uh, it, it became very hard to maintain balance between stream work and uh, and free time, uh, especially when I, I was uh, going through uh, a lot of uh, uh, four four days of stream, etc. We have like more interaction with the chat. Oh, I'm sorry about I'm sorry about that. Uh, I try to get, to keep an eye on on, on the questions, but uh, uh, okay, I, I'll apologies for for, for not uh, interacting in uh, with you guys more. Uh, I'll try to do better uh, uh, in the future. So I will reduce a little bit the, the amount of streaming. I'll still be streaming probably uh, three times a week if possible. Uh, no way. Did not come across the reason though. Okay. Uh, the news review will stay, so the news review uh, will, will stay. What will likely go is the set uh, gaming uh, uh, stream, which was until now on uh, on Monday evening, so that will probably leave the uh, 
the, 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 the regular schedule. I'll still do some gaming every once in a while, but it's not going to be like every week one uh, one gaming evening. It will be more like a uh, an, an improvised kind of thing. Uh, so that's, that's going to be that. And now I'm going to use the, the, the extra slot to try to do uh, to do more uh, interview. Uh, low intensity chill review. Nice to game the review playing at the same time. Yeah. I, I'll try to, I still gonna do some gaming, but it's not gonna be every week some, some gaming. I, I have to try about to find the balance, but uh, yeah, that's, that's gonna be it. I'm trying also to diversify the kind of people I will have on the channel. Uh, what about gaming with MEPs? Uh, well, let me tell you, it's not easy. I, uh, organizing this event tonight took me a month to find MEPs. Uh, I didn't find, I mean, I had more MEPs who had to cancel. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. De Blanco, uh, Gasa De Blanco was supposed to, to, to attend tonight. He had to cancel at the last minute. So, uh, gaming with MEPs. And also, we had tried that actually with the interview with Marqueta. Uh, when during our interview, we, uh, we were playing uh, some, uh, some Portal. And it was, <laughs> it was very distracting to play while having an actual interview. So, uh, from there, we, uh, I, I think it's not necessarily a good idea to, to do interviews while gaming with MEPs. Uh, but yeah, diversifying the people as Nobrains is saying, uh, seeing influencer and lobbyists, yes, I will try to get some lobbyists if I can to not necessarily talk about what they are lobbying on, but talk about the job of lobbyists in general. So, so that's something I have on my list. I'll try to have some journalists as well to, to come on the channel. Uh, definitely more chat involvement. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, I, usually I try to inter interact more with you guys in the, in the, in the channel, uh, uh, in, in the chat, just like. Here I had three guests, three uh, three guests to deal with, so you know you have a, uh, I had to give attention to the to the to the to the guests. But again, apologies for that. Uh, how about commissioners? I did send invitation to com to commissioners. Now I'm waiting for feedback, so that's uh, not uh, up to me there. Uh, I'd love to see some content com uh, content dedicated to parliamentary committees. Content I see nowhere here. The problem is uh, that uh, since I can only stream in the evening because I have a I have a job during the day, I can't do that. Uh, I can't uh, exactly live comment uh, parliamentary committees or plenaries, that sort of thing. That uh, unfortunately I can't. Uh, that's outside the thing I can do uh, because I have a, I have a day job. I know it. That's sad, but uh, that that's how it is. Uh, I'd love to get Ferov that he did get uh, he did get uh, an invitation, not live, but it's okay as a summary at the end of the week. We'll have to see because usually when there is some big things like the uh, the State of the Union, that sort of thing, I commented uh, on the news review. Like uh, if in September, I did a review of the of the disc of the of the the, 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 the God damn it, the state on the, uh, the speech on the State of the Union, etc. Uh, etc. Et uh, what's my day job? Uh, well, until now I was saying silent to it, but since my identity has since then has been public, uh, I think pretty much. Uh, uh, see, nobody can. Uh, it's not a secret anymore. I'm a I'm a lobbyist in the in my daily life. Ex assistant became lobbyist, uh, but I'm not going to tell you what I lobby for because that's outside the uh, uh, the purview of the of the of the of the channel. Uh, and I, I try to keep uh, my day job and uh, this uh, activity uh, as separated as I can uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, Immunity assistant exactly. Uh, but yeah, uh, season three. That's gonna be uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, mid uh, from mid January, I'll try to to, to have more uh, more people, more varied profiles. Uh, flashback when you uh, spat anti lobbyist propaganda. Or uh, yeah, uh, we don't like being an MEP assistant if you manage to finish your political studies. That's definitely an option. Huh? Uh, that's definitely an option to to, to become uh, an MEP assistant. I mean, my I think we we had a stream where I discussed a bit my. Uh, my story about an MEP assistant, I became an MEP assistant a bit by, uh, uh, not by accident, but uh, uh, it was uh, being at the right place at the right moment kind of a kind of story, like for, for many people in the, in, the, in the parliament. So yeah, don't, uh, everything is possible. You don't even have to do political studies huh, to, 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 do, uh, to become an MEP, MEP assistant. I didn't do any political studies. I had uh, colleagues who had all kinds of different uh, uh, background. Uh, I had someone who actually even had a colleague uh, who was uh, uh, trained uh, as a baker. So you know everything. Uh, everything is possible. 
Uh, MEP Assassin have more administrative work than political? No. I mean, it depends on the MEP, but uh, you do a lot of political work, a lot of uh, policy work as an assistant. Uh, uh, but it depends again on the on what the MEP needs you for. Uh, some some MEP assistant uh, are the, just doing uh, are just doing uh, administrative stuff. Some are doing politics, uh, politics, or they are doing communication, or they are doing policy work. So it can be pretty much everything. Baker worked for the EU. A baker became, I mean, someone who was trained as a baker became an MEP assistant. An MEP assistant. Uh, but yeah. Uh, okay, guys, I see uh, the time. So I hope that you, again, that you, you enjoyed it. Uh, if you like what you saw, well, don't hesitate to drop a follow. Uh, if you're feeling mighty generous, even, uh, even a sub. Don't forget to follow me on my other social media, uh, primarily Twitter and Discord. That's where the uh, fun stuff is happening. Uh, and yeah, on this note, I wish you all a good evening, uh, a good night, and happy holidays. Uh, and I will see you back in uh, in January. Uh, and yeah, give me give me tons of feedback on 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 Discord. That's uh, that's what I need. That's what I need. Uh, have you considered rather making YouTube content? Uh, yes, that's something I'm considering, uh, but not a lot. But uh, you will see for season three. I'm stopping with a spoiler. You'll have to be there to see. Uh, anyway, have a good one, guys, and I will see you next year. Bye.